First song is going to be 230. Um, for announcements, Bible class Wednesday at 7, uh, and Bible class on Sundays is 9.30, and service is 10.30. Uh, 230. I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust His holy word. song is number two. After this song, YC will have the opening prayer. <laughs> Yes, the 
to your throne at this time, thanking you for this day, the blessings of it you grant us, and for the opportunity that we have to worship you. We pray it will be according to your will and your desire and your pleasures. We pray now that you forgive us of our wrongs and our shortcomings in order that we stand before your throne justified and request petitions of thee. We're especially grateful for your son you allowed to take our place on the cross and will obey us. We pray that we worship you according to your desires. We pray that you be as Mr. Trump and he leads the nation. The things that he does would please you and glorify you. And if they're not, we pray that he'd be defeated in him. Pray now that you'd send us some rain. We have those who are sick and that they'll give us strength to return. We ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. Uh, 276. Two hundred and seventy six. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad.
Scripture reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you study to be quiet, to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. And now the sermon. for not having the PowerPoint ready. I hope that I can speak clear enough that everybody understands me, so that's normally why I have the PowerPoints, because I don't normally do a good enough job of being clear enough, I don't think, so, but we're going to try it. So, uh, in this lesson, we're looking at three commands that result in honest living, as Paul words it, so we're going to look at how to study to be quiet, doing our own business, and working with our own hands and what all of that means. Um, in this text, Paul is encouraging the church at Thessalonica to love one another. In verse 9, again, he says, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. I think we here know a lot about what love is um, in Christian terms. We go and we visit those that are gone and we constantly are concerned about those that are missing and we show that brotherly love. He knows that they have love, but he tells them to abound in it more and more. At the end of verse 10, he says, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much we know, we can always learn more. And that's what Paul is telling them here is, Yes, I know that you know about love. You've demonstrated that you know love. He says that they have shown their love toward all the brethren in all of Macedonia. But he's still encouraging them to increase more and more. And that's something that, as Christians, we always need to be encouraged about. Is that no matter how much work we've done, there is still more that we can do. So to this end, consistent with a life of love and that results... And honest living, and that behavior consists of three commands. He says, study to be quiet, do your own business, and work with your own hands. So before we begin the lesson, if you would, let's read again verses 11 and 12, so that we understand the whole context of what we're looking at this evening. He says again, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to do your own, and to work with your own hands. As we commanded you. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Verse 12, he says that you may walk honestly toward them that are without. So we're not only to be honest with ourselves, one another within the church, but also with those that, are, that have not obeyed the gospel, those that are without. And that you may have lack of nothing. Sometimes we look too much at money. When we think of having everything that we want or everything that we need. But he's not just talking about money here on being lacking. So let's look at this formula for honest living. To lead an honest life, let us first, as Paul says here, study to be quiet. Well, what does that mean? Study in this context means to be ambitious or to desire for superiority. But he's not talking about being superior to others. Because he's talking about how to make ourselves better and how to control ourselves. This is about self-control, so superiority over self, not superiority over others. So we need to always study to show ourselves approved unto God, not approved unto men, to make ourselves superior over ourselves. 
Um, he also says to be quiet. Is used, this is used in a figurative sense. A quiet life which does not disturb others or attract the wrong kind of attention. And I think I'm one that definitely needs to understand this because, as I've mentioned before, sometimes I let my um, sense of logic and reason get in my way and sometimes I draw too much attention to the things that don't need to have attention drawn to and sometimes I need to learn to be quiet. And I think sometimes we might all need to remember that is to be quiet and to not draw attention to the wrong kind of things. The idea then is to, to desire or be ambitious for the kind of life that isn't a disturbance or doesn't bring undue attention to ourselves. The concept is kind of oxymoronic together. So we ought to desire, or why do, should we desire to strive such a life, to be quiet? One, it's better than strife. Proverbs 17 and verse 1 says, Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. It's better than burning the candle at both ends or working too much. Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 6, Better is a handful with quietness than both the hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. As a teacher, I have found that for me, it's better to get all my work done in about a week or so during the summer or a couple of weeks during the summer, and I don't have to work or stress as hard during the school year. And I see a lot of teachers that are very busy. See, we have to turn in lesson plans a week ahead of time, and there's a lot of teachers that are very busy that right before that week before they're turning in lesson plans, and they work way, way harder than what they need to. I think it comes down to organization and planning ahead of time. But there's no, no sense in overworking ourselves. Set, or third, the way of peaceful living is the way to being a child of God. Matthew 5 and verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We need to strive to be peacemakers. So how do we obtain this quietness in our life? First, we can pray for it. Peter, or sorry, Paul told, first, uh, told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 to pray for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Sounds logical. If we pray for our government, if we pray for our country to be at peace, we'll be at peace. Second, we can be righteous people. Isaiah 32 and verse 17 and the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. We can strive for peace with all. Romans 14 and verse 19, Paul said, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify, or lift up, or encourage another. If you would turn with me to Romans chapter 12, Paul encourages us in one more point and living peaceable with all men. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 17. He says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but... Rather, give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Sometimes this is hard for us to understand and to grasp because we want to repay that vengeance right away when somebody does something evil to us. God's got it. On that day of judgment, God's going to take care of that. Second, Paul tells them that they need to do their own business. He tells all Christians to do their own business. What does this mean? In our vernacular today, we might say, mind your own business. In our society today, we've got a lot of people that like to mind other people's business. 
The magazine racks at the grocery stores uh, are full of magazines that want to be busybodies in other people's businesses. We see that with celebrities a lot. And I, I don't understand. I mean, I can to a certain degree because we all live private lives. But um, to a certain degree, I don't understand why a lot of celebrities get upset that people are nosing into their business because they put their lives out there on the front page for everybody to see it. Um, but that's what people do. They want to be nosy and be busy in everybody else's lives. But as Christians, we shouldn't worry about other people's lives. That's not what we're worried about. Now, I will say that in a society today with pedophiles and with sex trafficking, we do need to be alert and aware of what's around us. But as a whole, we don't need to worry about what other people are doing around us. We need to worry about ourselves. Paul has to reemphasize this point to the Thessalonians in the second epistle. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, he says, For we hear that there are some which walk among, us, among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. These busybodies are those who mind the business of others. We are not to be one of these. What does the Bible tell us about minding our own business? Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Daniel was an example of this. Daniel minded his own business and he ended up being called before King Nebuchadnezzar. And God took care of him. God watched out for him. We are to do our own business with a good attitude. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. How many times do we want to do good work to be seen by others? Or to be seen by our boss? Or to be seen by our co-workers? And if we don't get seen, we say, hey, look what I did. Just to get a pat on the back or maybe to get a promotion or something. Everything that we do as Christians, we should be doing it for God and not for others. If we do not mind our own business, our behavior will become shameful. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 13, Paul says, And withal, they learn to be idle. He's talking about young widows. Wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. And so he encourages them that they should remarry. But this isn't just a problem of young widows. This could be a problem for any Christian. If we're not busy with our own business, we could become idle and get into other people's business. So what are some reasons why this is important? If you would turn with me to Proverbs chapter 1, we'll hear the words of the wise Solomon. Here he tells us the trouble that one can get into when he doesn't tend to his own business. He says, my son, but again, he could be speaking to anyone. Beginning in verse 10 of Proverbs chapter 1, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us learn privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they wait, lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of their owners, of the owners thereof. This kind of sounds like some kids that have no guidance. Some kids that aren't busy doing things that they should be doing. But this could be adults because we have a lot of criminals in the world that lie in wait and do things that they shouldn't be doing as well. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, be not deceived, evil companionship. Evil companionships corrupt good morals. 
So it comes down to who we hang out with as well. Getting into trouble often starts simply by getting involved in someone else's business. So third, Paul says to work with your own hands. What does this mean? It means to make accomplishments with one's own efforts toward the support of one's family and those who are in need. You know, this used to be a big value in this country, working with our own hands, supporting our families, and supporting those who are in need. But it's something we don't see a lot of anymore. It is a natural consequence of minding our own business. We must tend to the affairs of our own life. Why do we work? First of all, God gave us work, or gave work to man as a consequence of sin. Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, it says, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it in all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. It was as much to keep man away from sin as it was punishment. When we're busy working with our own hands, we don't have much time to get in trouble. Idle hands are the devil's handiwork, as we used to say. Second, it's to provide for our own. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel or an unbeliever. We also need to have to give to others also. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Paul speaks to this in Acts chapter 20, verses 34 and 35, when he says, Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities, and to them that were with me I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. So, let us consider some closing thoughts. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of lips tendeth only to penury, or to need, or poverty. Proverbs 13, and verse 4. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thou po thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. And Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, why we're to give every first day of the week. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so the week let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Everything that we have is because God has allowed us to prosper. He gives us health. He gives us strength to be able to work so that we're not lacking, so that we're not idle, so that we don't get into other people's business. But we have to make that choice to be busy in our own work. So Paul gives us this formula for honest living. To study, to be quiet, do our own business, work with our own hands. So for us here, he's, it's an encouragement to continue to work. One way that we could word it is in this corner of the world, we might think that there's others in the world that aren't continuing to serve God, aren't doing God's work. Maybe we don't hear about other Christians out in the world. We only hear about the things that are on the news. But as it's 
was said in the Old Testament, there are still hundreds of thousands that have not bowed the knee to the There are others out in the world that are still serving God that we may not know about. So let's not be discouraged. Let's continue to work. God knows who's out there that is still working for him. And we shouldn't worry about who those people are, but we should continue to do our work and be busy for God. So Paul says that we do these things so that we can work honestly toward those who are not Christians, not just ourselves, and lack for nothing. This evening, if you're a Christian, maybe you've fallen away and you need to come back to God and make your soul right with Him. Or if you're not a Christian, you need to put Him on in baptism. Whatever your need may be, won't you come as we stand and as we sing. This is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. And stranger and death in me may Accept God's saving grace. His life on the cross He has given. No come by yet you may. He's earnestly pleading. Don't make no delay. Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. The change of red Prepare ye for the day, his pardon and mercy he offers, obey what yet you may, he'll save you from sin and bring sweet peace within, tomorrow may be too late, today is the day of salvation, tomorrow.
thankful.